Hi everyone, welcome to part 3 of the ENC 28J60 Ethernet module tutorial series. At this part, I will start with advanced initialization of the module, and after that, I will go ahead and connect the module to a local area network, and we will obtain an IP address using the ARP protocol. The first step with advanced initialization is to initialize the physical layer registers. Accessing the physical layer registers is not a straightforward process because we don't have a direct access from SPI to the physical layer registers. Let me just scroll up to the diagram. Uh, we don't have a direct access from SPI to the physical layer registers, but we can do this through uh, the MAC layer. And this is described in the data sheet down in here. Uh, it says if you want to write to a physical register, physical layer registers, you follow these three steps. You write the address of the physical layer register to this MAC register, then you start by writing the lower 8 bits in this specific register, then the upper 8 bits, and this will start the process automatically. And then you just check for this flag. If it's reset, then operation is complete. I will write this in a function in the header file. Uh, I'll write it and I'll explain it to you in a bit. Uh, here is the function prototype in the header file. I call it writephi, stand for write physical layer. Uh, the function takes to a parameter the address and the data. And you, you, you can see that the data are 16 bits, uh, and that's because all the physical layer registers are 16 bits registers. Uh, now, the body of this function uh, is this way. Uh, just, I, just as described in the dot sheet, you first write the address into this register, then you write the 16-bit data to this, and then you check for the flag to be reset. Now, let's do the read physical layer function. To read from a physical layer register, uh, the process described in the data sheet is, is quite similar. So let me just write it in the header file and then I'll explain it to you. All right, this is the function prototype of the read physical function and this is the definition of that function. Well, the first step is very similar to, to the right. We just pass the physical address to the MAC, uh, to the MAC register and then we enable something called the read bit so that we tell the interface between the SPI and the physical register, we tell the MAC that we want to read this time, not write. Uh, and then we wait for the end of reading process, we disable the read flag and then we copy the content and return them uh, as a return to this function. Alright, now having, having created write and read function of the physical layer, <coughs> we can now go ahead and do the initialization of the physical layer. And the first thing we do here is we initialize the LED of the physical layers. Uh, the ENC device has got two LEDs on the physical layer, has got orange and green, and I'm setting them so that the orange blinks when we are, when we receive packets, and when the device sends packets, this one will light up or blink, and that's what this function is doing. Uh, and this is described in page 11 for the uh, PH uh, physical layer config control register, or physical module LED control register. Uh, the next thing is to disable something called the load back in the half duplex mode. Uh, and that's described in the dot sheet in this register on page 39. Uh, it's bit number 8. When we set this one high, we disable something called load back. Uh, that's actually all for the physical layer initialization. Uh, and the next thing to do is to enable the RX interrupt line so that whenever a packet is received, the interrupt line will be triggered. We first enable the RX mode or receive mode on the Econ1 register, uh, and that is bit number uh, 012, bit 2. Uh, to packet which pass the current filter config will be written into the receive buffer. That's what we're doing here. We then enable the global interrupt and the packet receive interrupt, and they're described here on page um, 67. Um, when we enable the global interrupt, this allows the interrupt to drive the int pin on the ENC28. And by enabling the receive packet interrupt, we enable receive packet interrupt to... Um, uh, you got the idea, right? And then we finally clear the interrupt before we use it. Uh, this would clear the interrupt flag and describe in here. When you write one to it, um, it will be cleared. 
Uh, and by getting to this stage, we have completed all the basic and advanced initializations. Now we are ready to move into the next step. We connect the device to the LAN network and obtain an IP address uh, using the ARP request. So before I make a start on the ARP protocol, I want to remind you that whatever changes I make in the header and C file, you really don't need to worry about copying them uh, because at the end of the video, I'll provide them down in the description. Uh, and also, just to let you know that I have referred to uh, some Arduino open source uh, library to get the structure of my uh, STM library. So, some credit go to the Arduino guys. Alright, making a start on this. If you want to get your device an IP address on a local area network, you have two options. Either to get a static IP address or to get a dynamic IP address. Getting a static IP address just requires you sending an ARP request to the router. However, if you want to get a dynamic IP address, use something called DHCP protocol, and with this, the router will automatically assigns you a vacant IP address. Um, but however, this is slightly more complex. For simplicity, we're just going to go with the ARP request and obtain a static IP address. You just need to be careful that the IP address is not taken by any device in the network. But before we be able to do this, we need to add a couple of functions to our library. The first function we need to add is to write to our TX buffer and the second function is to send the packet. So let me add the two function prototypes and then I'll explain them to you. Alright, these are the function prototypes. The first function I called it write buffer. This will write data to the TX buffer and the second function is packet send. This will prepare for sending up a new packet to the network. So let's go ahead and define the definition of each function in the C file. Uh, Alright, starting with the first function, write TX buffer. Uh, and according to the dot sheet in this table in base 28, uh, if you want to write buffer memory, uh, write like write your TX buffer, you send this operation code with this argument and followed by the data. And this is exactly what's been doing in here. We first write the buffer operation and then followed by a byte. This is called the uh, per packet byte. You have to send a byte before every packet. I'll explain it in a minute. And then you send the data, whatever data you have, and the length of that data. Uh, for the per packet control byte, uh, this is described on page 41 of the data sheet. Uh, it's actually very simple. It, it's just a configuration for that specific packet. Okay. Uh, whether you want you want to configure it again or you want to take the configuration you set up in the uh, Mac control register three. Uh, it's saying something like whether you want to see RC attached to the frame or you want you want it to zero padded to 60 bytes and uh, so on. Okay. If you want to know more about it, just read page 41. That's simply all about it. And for the second function, the packet send. Uh, and what this function is essentially doing is just implementing the transmitting packing process described in the data sheet. And this is also in page 40, just down 41 and 42. Uh, the process transmit process is described in four steps. Let me explain it to you line by line. So the first bit, uh, we're doing set and equal one txrst. Uh, looking at equal one register in the data sheet, the, we are just uh, moving from the held in reset to the normal operation of the transmit okay and then the third line of code is we are clearing this these two bits and the eir register and these are actually described in the uh, in step number four i believe yes we have to clear this to enable an interrupt when done uh, then we set the right pointer to the start of the tx buffer and the end uh, to whatever uh, length of data we have and this is described in step number uh, number one I believe yes number one and number three the start and end of the TX buffer uh, after that we call the write buffer function that we just um, defined earlier here uh, to shift the data into the TX buffer and after that we start the transmission we wait for the flag for uh, a thousand ticks and then we check if there are no errors we break and stop if there are errors then we cancel the previous transmission and um, stop the function okay that's simply how these two functions work now we are ready to write an ARP a protocol and send it via these two functions all right to write an ARP request we first need to know the structure or the format of this protocol and we're going to refer to radian dynamics uh, it's one of the very best websites that explain ethernet protocols uh, he really done a great job 
Uh, and the first, he explains the ARB request. Um, ARB request protocol is very simple. You, in the fir first six byte, you send a broadcast MAC address because we don't know the MAC address of the router. And then we send, followed by our, our own MAC address, the one we assigned to the STM uh, Ethernet module. Uh, and then the, e the Ethernet type and it's an ARP, ARP protocol uh, and these two stay as default um, and then the operation is we want to request ARP request uh, and then the target IP sorry this is the sender MAC address again our MAC address uh, the sender IP address it's the static IP address we want to obtain to our device so you write the IP address in here but first you have to make sure that it's not taken by any of the devices and I think the most effective way is to open your router page and go to the ARP and DHCP. And the ARP, um, these are the assigned, uh, the static IP address in the network, and these are the DHCP uh, IP addresses. Just make sure that yours is not one of these, um, and it's up, and it's above the minimum of them because routers have got a minimum. I think a minimum is a hundred here. And the maximum is perhaps 200, so just put it between 100 and 200 to be on the safe side. Next is the target MAC address, uh, and again we don't know the MAC address of the router, so we just leave it unpopulated. And then the target IP address, that's the IP address of the router. By default, most of the router IP addresses are 192.168.1.1, as simple as that. So let's write it in the STM main, and uh, I'll explain it again. Uh, this is our protocol exactly as described in the page. Uh, we start with a broadcast MAC, our MAC address that we assigned to our device. This is the Ethernet type. We want we want this to be our uh, protocol, and then these are some default. I'll leave them as default. Uh, and then the the operation is request. So we we'll put this one one. Then again the sender MAC, which is our MAC address. The IP address we want, I bought 119, 119 because uh, it's not populated to any. Uh, then we leave the target MAC unpopulated and the the target IP address, the router IP address. Uh, this is in hex, so this is 192.168.1 and 1. Now, we're pretty much done. We just need to call the packet, send packet function to send this packet. So, uh, I've written it in advance, let me copy and paste it in here. That's how you do it. You call the enc28 packet send function. Oh, what happened? Let me just check. What? Oh, yeah, sorry. All right, so you call the enc28 packet send function, uh, and then you pass the ARP request uh, array pointer. So 42. Uh, I created a delay of two seconds and I toggle the blue um, LED, okay? And we're going to watch this in Wireshark. Uh, if, you, if you don't know what Wireshark is, just Google it. Wireshark is a software that can monitor your local area network. It cannot monitor everything, but it can monitor the packets sent to your device and the uh, broadcast packets. And since this ARP request is a broadcast, we should be able to see it in all the devices connected to the LAN. All right, let's me let, let me first compile, upload it to the board, and then we're going to open Wireshark. Okay, this is Wireshark. Um, let me open the Wi-Fi capture because I connected my laptop to a Wi-Fi, not the wire. Now, um, let me click the reset button on the STM and we should be able to see an ARP packet, ARP request uh, in here. No. Oh, there we go. Uh, let me stop this. I can already see it. So this is our MAC address we assigned in the STM. Let me just uh, convince you. So our MAC is 7469692D3036. And that's exactly this one. So we're sending this broadcast ARP uh, to the router. Um, we're telling it that we want to use this um, IP address. It's actually not telling it that we want to use this. It's telling it to, uh, that we want the MAC address of the router but it's also doing this. Uh, and to double check, let's go to the router page and we should be able to see 119 added to the list. Okay, so this is the router page. Let me refresh it. And go again to the ARB. 
Oh, there we go. Wait, can you see? 192.168.1.9 is assigned to 7.46969. This is my MAC address. So brilliant. This is done. We have assigned a static IP address to our device. And that's the end of this part. Thank you for watching. Wait for me for the next part where I'm going to do the UDP protocol. Thank you.